Raining, 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 raining. It's raining. And raining quite a lot. Ah, dirty. Everything is dirty and rainy. Ah. So this is the Megaphobema mesomelas habitat. Wait a second. <laughs> so I hope you see us a little bit better now. Uh, uh, it's raining, it's cold. And uh, yeah, the footage is a bit blurry because of all the rain, because of all the raindrops. So we will not film ourselves, we will focus on searching tarantulas. Even though everything is completely wet, this area right here is dry. It's dry, very dry actually. And uh, we'll now try to find some mesomelas because this area looks very promising. Yeah, so it's still raining, pouring rain and uh, lots of wind, of course. But so far we have not found big adult female, which we were able to tickle out. I've mentioned it in the earlier um, footage, short clip, that we found a big adult female in a burrow, but sadly was not able, or we were not able to get her out. We should have dig her out with, uh, yeah, that that's not the... The thing you should do here because they are protected by law in Costa Rica so you are not able to dig them out or you should not do it um, actually we have found a different species which lives in Patrick with Megaphobema mesomelas it is the Sferobotria hovmani a very special species um, it has a horn on the carapax on the foveal grove where the same at the very same place as the Ceratoburus from Africa have their horns. And there are just a few species in Latin America who have horns. For example, Tyrtofolis um, in the Caribbean, or for example, Megaphobema tecae in the Amazon rainforest. No one really knows what this horn is about, but they do have it in different sizes. And this species, Sferobotre of Mani, has it. Um, awesome find. Of course, we found it already in Panama about five years ago, but still it's amazing to see them in the wild. And we'll take some pictures, we'll take some videos, and hopefully we'll find juvenile ones or major males of the same species. That would be awesome. But in the meanwhile, because it's still raining, of course at the moment when I'm filming it's not raining, but yeah, the last few hours it was raining. So we will now stop and take a lunch break. That's what I mean. Uh, take a lunch break and then continue in the search, searching for uh, Megaphobema mesomelas. Sferobotria hovmani belongs to the genus Sferobotria, and there is only one species, namely this one right here, and it has a horn on the carapax itself as i mentioned in earlier videos so feel free to check out the last one i'll link it up in the right hand corner um, where we were able to spot this species for the very first time in costa rica but back to this one this is an adult female uh, they reach sizes about four to four and a half centimeters in body length um, translates into about 13 centimeters uh, in, in black span in the end. Um, awesome looking tarantulas. The coloration is not that special but the horn is and it's just extremely extremely special. 
um, you will find this species around 1000 to 1500 meters above sea level and when you're reading about this species in certain literatures you're going to find that this species actually burrows quite deep into the soil um, up to one meter or even even more so back in uh, 2010 where we were in Panama we also found um, Scarabotria of Mani and the burrow itself was actually very deep it was around 60 to 70 centimeters but this one right here um, I would assume it was around 20 or 30 centimeters and there is actually also a lowland form of this species uh, in the pet trade so I don't know the differences between the highland and the lowland species of, of uh, Sferobotre of Mani but uh, they certainly differ in locality and one of them is the lowland is most likely found in lower altitudes as the name would suggest so for my side I haven't seen any morphological differences in the lowland and highland form um, but if you're able to buy them and they have a specific uh, form mentioned then feel free and make sure that you use this form in the future for your future breeding projects and you use this form in future breeding projects so the highland form does not get mixed up with the lowland form. So in a not so typical space habitat we found Megaphobema mesomelas, an adult female in this roadside embankment. Of course it's still raining. I said it about 200 times now. It's raining. It sucks. And here in this little hole is Madame Megaphobema living. Sorry for the video quality. Hola, que tal? Hermosa. Freshly molted female. Awesome. So she decided to came out of her burrow with a little bit of tickling. You see her? She's quite quite impressive. Freshly molted. Velvet black and awesome orange coloration. in this habitat. Megafobema mesomelas is probably the best looking tarantula in Costa Rica. Um, just pure awesomely looking. The coloration with the deep black, velvet black, short hairs everywhere. And the orange is just awesome. You can see in this specimen right here, the black parts from like one and two actually have a lot of orange. This is not something which is specific to the location or locality um, of this species of tarantula but uh, we've found actually several different coloration morphs or forms within the very same population. So in the hobby or in the pet trade there is often the case that if you have a 
special or yeah, extremely different colored specimen of a certain species that you might think that you have something unique most of the time just with seeing this example of Megaphobema mesomelas it is just normal variation within the species and here this specimen has a lot of orange or, or bright coloration on every segment of like one and two and there are other uh, specimens who are yeah more more black on, on this side of, of the legs so easily explained um, no scientific words needed for that so of course you're also going to see this with a lot of brachypelma species uh, for example brachypelma emilia um, or brachypelma boemai there are certain specimens who have a black triangle on the carapace and certain specimens do not have a black triangle. This is all within normal variation of the species and uh, you can see this by checking out, for example, Eddie Hyman's website wildtarantulas.com. Um, he has documented, I think, uh, he has documented some variations from time to time in Brachypelma where you can see that some species do have a black triangle and others don't have. Seeing Megaphobema mesomelas in the wild was on my bucket list for such a long time because it's a uniquely colored species and it's such a huge specimen as well we found here. Yeah, it was probably one of the best days ever. And you can see she got not disturbed by anything. The rain was pouring down, she was full of water droplets and the wind was blowing. She was just posing there for us and we were able to take some pictures, videos, yeah, just, just amazing. So if you like videos like this one, make sure you head over to our channel BirdSpiderCH and watch some others maybe. And if you like the videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell icon so you actually get notified when we upload a new video. It would be awesome. for us all the time and uh, the rain doesn't really bother her at all so she's really used to the rain here and basically you should not keep them as pet tarantulas because as you can see and as you can see here and as you can probably um, hear it in this video about 200 times it's raining all the time and it's almost impossible to reproduce these settings in the enclosures you have back home. And this species of tarantula is actually poached by a lot of people. It is not yeah, made for the enclosures back at your place or for the tarantula hobby at all. Because these kind of tarantulas need an environment which is almost not reproducible back home. So if you're able to buy one, you really shouldn't do it because only if you dedicate yourself for yeah, the husbandry of these kind of tarantulas, then you should do it because they need very special uh, conditions. Of course, there has to be um, a lot of moisture and which is almost impossible to do if you're keeping them in a tank because the tank is usually way too small to get a decent microclimate for these species so I don't say it's impossible to keep them there are a lot of people who are keeping them but keeping doesn't mean that they like to be kept in a place where the conditions are not as here in Monteverde so that's all for it I hope we'll find some more Megaphobema mesomelas on this trip there are several different other locations uh, which we will go and in the meanwhile we'll try to put her back into her hole, her burrow and as you can see we will return it, return her back to her burrow where she will be safe and hopefully waiting for another person who likes to see them in the wild. That's for it. 
I hope you really like this episode even though it's raining and it's maybe a little bit special than others so make sure you subscribe make sure you leave a comment down below what you think of this whole trip uh, what you think about Mega of Obema Mesomelas and especially what you think about keeping them and in the pet trade as a pet tarantula you know my opinion now and feel free to leave yours down in the comment section.